Hi there, Jay Tedeschi here, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist with Autodesk. Today we're going to take a look at visualization and rendering with Inventor Pro 2016. We'll start off here in the at the top level of the assembly for the BAC Mono and we're taking a look here at a couple of different rendering modes. Um, a second ago we were looking at uh, wireframe with hidden edges, there's uh, monochrome, this is uh, technical illustration, Sketch illustration, there, I mean there's a lot of variations, a lot of ways of presenting uh, the model. Um, several are the ones that we use tip, most typically when we are designing, but there are also several that are included for presentations. So if you, for example, had some stylish uh, image that you needed to produce, the tools are there to allow you to do it. A uh, quick, quick switch over to the view environment allows us to take a look at some things which are easily customizable and can really help you tweak these uh, rendered views or illustrated views uh, regardless of the type of output. There's a lot of different uh, methods of tweaking what that rendered or, or illustrated output is going to look like. Uh, take a look right now at the ground plane settings so we can get this nice grid effect. Uh, if that is something that you deem uh, pleasing. Uh, within there you can control uh, for example reflection, the, the blur of the reflection, the fall off, um, essentially how the reflection is going to appear on the ground plane when it's enabled which I will do right now. That looks really nice. Now let's uh, move up to a realistic uh, rendering mode which in essence if it's enabled uh, automatically sets Inventor into ray tracing mode which is you know I didn't change that so obviously uh, we are ray tracing right now as you can see the effects are quite profound with the inclusion of the ground plane the reflection kind of looks like it's sitting on water you can also change the uh, interactive uh, lighting environments I'm changing to infinity pool right now uh, this type of uh, rendered environment uh, tends to uh, work really, really well when we're ray tracing as you'll receive reflections on, of the environment on the body of the model itself, as well as the reflections uh, on the ground plane, uh, which are quite stunning in this view. Let's take a look at some of the other options we have here with regards to the lighting environment. Now some of these uh, IBL environments include uh, scenery. So for example this one, the Stuttgart Courtyard. And we're going to go in and edit this one right now for the sole purpose of we're, we're trying to make it make the object, in this case the BAC model, appear as though it's part of this scene. So what I'm what I'm going to do here is look at the, the directions of the shadow in the back of the image there and we're going to try to rotate the shadow around underneath our BAC Mono and try to match the light direction that exists in the lighting environment uh, that, that dome. Uh, the reason for this being is we want this you know, to, to the human eye, we want this to appear as natural as possible um, that will lend to the realism of the image. Once we start ray tracing, uh, the ray tracing is a very iterative process. Uh, the, shadows, the shadow direction has now been set to match the rest of this, the scene itself and then it's just a matter of uh, waiting for the uh, ray traced image to resolve itself. Uh, depending on the hardware that you are using, uh, that could be either you know, a long time or not very long at all. You'll notice that the reflection of the environment itself is shown in the reflective surfaces uh, on the mono itself. Uh, you'll also notice that you at any time can pause the rendering and save out a image. In this case I'm saving out a PNG file, we'll call it mono ray trace 1. Let's go ahead and save and then the ray tracing will proceed from that point forward. Hopefully you saw some stuff that was interesting. Look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.